I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family. Britain's longest serving monarch Queen Elizabeth II dies at the age of 96. The royal family informed that Queen Elizabeth died peacefully in Scotland on Thursday after a long drawn battle with health problems since last year. Newly elected United Kingdom Prime Minister Lister paid solemn tribute to the monarch, describing the Queen as the rock on which modern Britain was built. Queen Elizabeth II provided us with the stability and the strength that we needed. She was the very spirit of Great Britain, and that spirit will endure. Her life of service stretched beyond most of our living memories. In return, she was loved and admired by the people in the United Kingdom and all around the world. She has been a personal inspiration to me and to many Britons. Her devotion to duty is an example to us all. Earlier this week, at 96, she remained determined to carry out her duties as she appointed me as her 15th Prime Minister. It is a day of great loss, but Queen Elizabeth II leaves a great legacy. After the news of Queen Elizabeth II's demise, tributes started pouring in from various political leaders, country heads and also the United Nations. Prime Minister Narin Modi condoled Queen Elizabeth's death calling the Queen a stalwart of our times. PM Modi hailed her inspiring leadership to her nation and people and said that she personified dignity and decency in public life. PM Modi also recalled their memorable meetings during his visits to Britain in 2015 and 2018. PM Modi said in a tweet that I will never forget her warmth and kindness. During one of the meetings, she showed me the handkerchief Mahatma Gandhi gifted her on her wedding. I will always cherish that gesture. In the wake of Queen Elizabeth's demise, the Indian government announced one day of state mourning on September 11 as a mark of respect on the passing away of Queen Elizabeth. The Queen's death triggers what is known in Britain's royal circles as Operation London Bridge, the formal preparations and protocol that kicks in following the death of the monarch. The Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office Global Response Centre is responsible for informing governments outside the UK where she is head of state, followed by other Commonwealth nations. The day of her death is referred as D-Day. With each subsequent day, a countdown is run until the funeral expected 10 days after death. It is expected that Charles will be officially proclaimed King on Saturday. This will happen at St. James Palace in London, in front of a ceremonial body known as a section Council made up of members of the Privy Council which includes a group of senior members of Parliament, past and present, and peers as well as some senior civil servants, Commonwealth High Commissioners and the Lord Mayor of London. At her death, Queen Elizabeth was head of the state not just of United Kingdom but 14 other former British colonies, including countries like Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau joined world leaders offering condolences to British royal family. She was one of my favorite people in the world, and I will miss her so. It is with the deepest of sorrow of the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. She was our queen for almost half of Canada's existence, and she had an obvious, deep, and abiding love and affection for Canadians. She served us all with strength, and wisdom for 70 years. Elizabeth was born as Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor on April 21, 1926 in London, oldest daughter of King George V and Elizabeth Boyce Leon. During her 20s, Elizabeth represented her father around the world after he lost the battle against cancer. King George V died on February 6, 1952 while she was in Kenya and she was pronounced Queen on the very same day. She was officially crowned in Westminster Abbey on 1953. From the outset, her reign was thus characterized by discipline and a sense of duty. 
Queen Elizabeth had not received proper education, but she was a trained auto mechanic and truck driver and served in the Auxiliary Territorial Army during the Second World War. For a long time, she was the only member of the royal family to have served in the military. On November 20, 1947, Queen Elizabeth married Prince Philip Mountbatten, a scion of Greek and Danish royal families, who became a Royal Navy officer and was granted the title of Duke of Edinburgh shortly before the marriage took place. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were together for 73 years until Prince Philip's death last year. In 1953, Queen Elizabeth swore to dedicate her life to the British people. It was an oath she took seriously. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family. The Queen would have an average of 500 official appointments in a given year. This made her the most well-travelled head of state in history, with her undertaking hundreds of royal visits around the world. Her first state visit to India was in 1961, when she accompanied her husband, the late Prince Philip, toward Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata and visited the Taj Mahal in Agra. She also paid tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at Raj Ghat in New Delhi. The royal couple was in India as guest of honor at the Republic Day Parade on the invitation of the then President Dr. Rajin Prashad. To the Queen and Prince Philip, the government and people of India stretched out the hand of welcome. President Prasad, Premier Nehru and Vice President Krishnan were at the airport to meet them. To arrive in India for the first time is an unforgettable experience for anyone in any age. How much more so for the Queen, for whom the magic of air travel in a few hours translated the January gloom of London into the tropical brilliance of New Delhi. Dr. Prasad sincerely spoke for the whole Republic of India in bidding the royal visitors a most warm welcome. The Vice President, as well as Mr. Nehru and his sister, added his greeting. Dressed in a signature fur coat and hat, the Queen addressed a massive crowd at jam-packed Delhi's Ramlila ground. In one of her address, Queen Elizabeth said that the warmth and hospitality of Indian people and the richness and diversity of India itself have been an inspiration to all of us. Her final visit to India was to mark the 50th anniversary celebrations of India's independence and for the first time she made a reference to difficult episodes of colonial history. Queen Elizabeth in her statement said, It is no secret that there have been some difficult episodes in our past. Jallianwala Bagh is a distressing example. Over the years, the Queen has also hosted three Indian presidents, Dr. Radha Krishnan in 1963, R. Venkat Raman in 1990 and Pratibha Patil in 2009. In 2009's state bouquet address for President Patil at Buckingham Palace, Queen Elizabeth said that Britain and India have a long shared history which today is a source of great strength in building a new partnership fit for this new country. Queen Elizabeth said that nearly 2 million of our own citizens are tied by descent and enduring family links to India. They represent one of the United Kingdom's most dynamic and successful communities. The relations between our two countries are built on strong and deep foundations and are set fair for the 21st century. The United Kingdom is proud to have more than 30,000 Indian students in our universities every year. In the future, we hope that many more British students will go to study in Indian universities, making this a genuinely two-way exchange of learning. Your visit will also celebrate the growing and dynamic economic relationship between our two countries. We look forward to the expansion of this in many spheres, from manufacturing to filmmaking, from joint research to the development of cutting-edge green technologies. An important component of the Queen's relationship with India was a sizable and vibrant Indian diaspora in the UK. Her engagement with this community has encompassed some memorable movements such as her first visit to both a Hindu and a Sikh temple in Britain which took place to her Golden Jubilee in 2002. Ten years later, during her Diamond Jubilee, she visited a Hindu school in North London. 
the british indian community threw themselves into last jubilee celebrations lighting beacons holding street parties and planting trees the queen has impressed india and indians with her visits and engagement with her wondrous country and its people queen elizabeth ii reigned for more than 70 years and the majority of people have never known anyone else on the throne during her reign queen elizabeth saw 15 prime ministers serve britain from winston churchill in 1952 to list as being the latest one in 2022 for queen elizabeth since becoming monarch in 1952 her image has been part of everyday life emblazoned across most of the government imagery from coins to passports after her death the position of the head of commonwealth will not automatically pass on to the queen's successor but it is likely to be chosen collectively by the heads of government many nations may choose to become republic with their own head of state following the queen's death and the proclamation of a new king the uk will see lots of changes not least to everyday items and many images which will revolve around the queen would need to be updated to make reference to a king being on the throne in the uk all cash notes and coins depict the face of the queen but now it is expected that following her death new coins and cash will be created with the face of the king as the authorities had been planning for quite some time the new cash will be produced and distributed into general circulation with the old money gradually being phased out new passports issued will be tweaked to reflect the male pronouns of the new king along with a slight change in britain's national anthem the line lord save the queen will be exchanged with lord save the king many believe it was queen elizabeth's avoidance of any political controversy as a head of state and her refusal to bend the monarchy to the winds of fashion that enabled elizabeth to trump in the role that would earn her the love and respect of so many as the head of the nation With time Queen Elizabeth understood that not everything in national life had to have an explicit purpose that for a conservative nation in the throes of near ceaseless change the continuity she represented in person and in office had a value beyond measure Queen Elizabeth understood that the rhythm of monarchy the traditions and ceremonies the births and the weddings and the deaths provided a comfort to those sometimes bewildered by the uprooting of the past and served as a reminder that the drum beat of life was shared across class age and circumstance the longest serving british monarch queen elizabeth had believed in the great unwritten rule of modern day britain monarchy this is where unprotected by tradition and unprepared by precedent queen elizabeth drove her reign alone for more than 70 years i have been lucky to meet and to know many of the world's great leaders and i have perhaps come to understand a little about what made them special it has sometimes been observed that what leaders do for their people today is government and politics but what they do for the people of tomorrow that is statesmanship <laughs> 